Aha, uh -huh, we got it now. This Thank is it. you. <laughs> now it's good. Thank you. It's so good to see you. So while we while we hang on for our um, followers to join, we just just read on right on the conversation. It's good to see you. I mean, uh, I mean, we've been talking for a while, and uh, <laughs> it's good. Thank you for coming on board, man. Thank you so much. Um, I really love your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so just a brief one, just before the others join us. Um, yeah, let's just have a quick chat. Uh, just like to just briefly tell us about uh, Mr. Conley Mugabe. Who, who is who's Conley Mugabe? Mm, Conley Mugabe, what can I say? He's a very humble young lawyer from Uganda, passionate okay. about human rights. Okay. I find myself entangled in the idea of feminism, one of the very few male ones. Yeah, it's basically that. The rest is not, it's not as much. The big thing, yes, I'm here to speak for the women. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your passion. We found, uh, we found an NGO in 2016-17. Uh, yeah. 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 As young chaps just from school after graduation called My Lawyer Uganda. It's, it's had a number of projects across the country trying to empower women here and there. We've held a number of outreaches. Uh, we've held campaigns to keep kids in school, the girl child. And we tell people she needs a pen, not a penis. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Right. Basically, that's Conley. Thank you very much, Mr. Conley. Um, so we're just going to dive right into the conversation. We're really far behind time. We should have started at eight, but um, for these technical issues, I'm really glad we're able to sort it out because we had the same issue about last week. And um, now that I know, I think it's it's um, it was a connection, right? It was a connection that was actually holding us back. Connection yeah, it was a connection problem from your end. Okay, fine. That's that's duly noted. Um, so yeah, thank you. You rightly said in your introduction now that you have been uh, you've been very active and you and a group of other people in uh, being a voice for the girl child and also sorry yes we try we do oh yeah you're trying to be a voice for the girl child and uh, advocating for a girl's rights as well um, I must say that I mean during uh, during a couple of searches I actually have bought into you though. Um, I, I saw how you're very active in the social space in actually bringing out your voice for um, lending your voice uh, to this cause. Uh, so just tell us, what is the state of gender-based violence first? Gender-based violence. What's the state of gender-based violence in Uganda? Um, uh, thank you very much. I think we need, to, we need to give this thing a solid background. Okay. I'll introduce the subject with breaking down gender-based violence itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is no specific dis definition, but the World Health Organization and the CEDAW, which is a convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women, define gender-based violence. Or threatening use of actual force against oneself or another or others that may result into actual or likelihood of injury, physical or mental. We can take that as a working definition for GBV, gender-based violence. Maybe we could also have to define gender, which is the state of being male or female the construction of being male or female. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There is a line between gender and sex because sex is the actual state. You're either a man or a woman. That's the sex. The gender society does attach to either. From that, we look at the legal framework about GBV and uh, it is only fair that we start this from the UDHR, which, was the, which is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that was signed in 1948 and has been ratified by very many African countries. 
Um, uh, it was a good instrument, in as far as it, it tried to outline. It still referred to the human being as man. So the UDHR itself is critiqued for being so much of a male conversion. Where they are supposed to say man or woman, they take man. They call it the rights of man. There's nothing but like the rights of a woman. You get it? Yeah. And uh, so when it was criticized, Later, we got the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. This was 1979, around, uh, that is, 21 years later after the UDHR. And it is the Convention now that streamlines the rights of a woman. It, it also suffers its own challenges, enforcement, it's underfunded, then there are many reservations, Member states are given options to practice what they wish to, but at least to cover the rights of a woman in detail. On the African continent, we have the Maputo Protocol of uh, 2003, and uh, it, it, it tries to Africanize the entire CEDAW. It brings it into the context of an African society. And uh, as of 2020, 50, 54, 55 African states had ratified it and they were members. And it is more detailed. It covers the politics, covers the position of women in armed conflict, it covers education and training for women, the economics, the social welfare, health and reproductive rights the right to food, the right to fair and good housing, inheritance, it tries to Africanize these rights as they were set out in the CEDO. Then, uh, look, if we... We have a few... a few localized laws, a few local laws. We have the Domestic Violence Act. We have uh, a few sections in the Penal Code. We have uh, that the marriage and divorce never came through. It got issues after it was assented to in parliament. The president never signed. Yeah, there are a few laws locally in Uganda. Okay. The effort is there, the goodwill is there, but even the few that we have, enforcement is still a big problem. So basically, that's the background I could give about gender-based violence and the legal regime, the laws that cover it. Yes, I didn't tell you that GBV can cover, it can be physical, it can be sexual violence, it can be psychological, it can be neglect. Yeah, it takes different forms. It can be economic. Yeah. Hmm. All right, thank you very much. You've actually covered it in the wider scope. And um, yeah, we're going to be having these conversations now and then. And um, our... So please, guys, whoever, if you're viewing, if you're watching, uh, you're free, just drop in your questions there and then we'll, um, we'll attend to it. Okay, now, before I move to the next one, uh, I, I, we've had a question there. The question is, what inspired you? What inspired you as a male, um, as a man, uh, as, um, as Conley Mugabe, what inspired you, yeah, <laughs> yes, Conley Mugabe, what inspired you to become a male feminist? What inspired you to advocate, to start advocating for the girl child? It's, it's, it's a good question. I, I am brought up by my mother and my father, but at the time we were growing up, my dad was away from home. So we had a lot of time with our mother then we had a lot of time with our grandmother who had lost the husband who would have been my grandfather in the early 90s. It was my grandmother, it was my mother. And we saw how much they strived to bring us thus far. And I learned to appreciate that indeed, if you empower a woman, you empower a nation. 
Oh, thank you very much. So from what I get, what you're saying is, while you were growing up, you had a lot of, you had um, strong women who you looked up to. Women who, yeah, you had strong women who you looked up to. And when you grew up in the, into the society and then you realize that people are actually despising women, it then, it then hit you hard. Like, man, the women, women are really strong when you empower them. And that's because I am a product of a woman, uh, of uh, a child being raised by a woman. Am I clear? Yeah. It, is, it? it was a bit challenging. And surprisingly, the women I'm talking, about, I'm, I'm talking about are not the 21st century women. They are not those educated women. These were basic women, local women, mm. till the land. Mm. Really very, but they still raised. Okay, so would how much they how much potential they have that is being underutilized? And All right. So now, part of to say we need a stronger woman to build a strong nation. So from 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 um, if I have to quickly follow up on on what you're saying, you are. We're talking, in fact, let's, let me move on and I will come back to that. Um, quickly, you. You, you talked about, I was, I, I'd like to know, can you just tell us what is the awareness level on gender-based violence in, in, in Uganda? The awareness level. How are people really aware about how, because you define gender-based, you actually told, mentioned earlier that uh, this GBV could be, in, abuse could be in form, it could be psychological abuse, could be emotional yeah. abuse, could be, so how aware are people in Uganda to understand that, that no, at this point it's becoming an abuse? How aware are they from your understanding? Thank you very much. If we, if, if we would speak figures, I'd maybe put it at uh, 50%. The awareness level is still low. Women, they don't care about their property rights. Um, uh, a few archaic traditions have been phased out. Female genital mutilation, widow inheritance, and many more. The most archaic ones. Those ones have faded, faded out. But it is rare to find a woman making a will. It's rare to find a woman saying, I, I don't want the man. This is when I call it quits. No, the parents would say no, stick to that marriage. You got married. So there is, there is a level, much as it's trying to move, it's trying to grow, but there is still a link missing. Women still... And with the main, it's worse. You're my wife. Even career women, she has to run out of office at four because she has to cook for the husband. She must get home before the husband. Even when she has a live chat with one Africa that she would have loved to wait for, she has to run home because I am the wife. I need to get home before him. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. So there's, it is 50-50 for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, what from a question just popping up here because I have a couple of questions listed, but I think I would like us to engage more on what the what the audience is actually throwing at us because this actually this their questions are a reflection of what the society think on the issue or what society would like to know. You understand? Now somebody just asked, what makes what makes female more susceptible to GBV? I mean, why why are the women why are the female more more vulnerable? Why are they more uh, exposed to gender-based violence. Why? Remember, the theme of our campaign is the other gender, which means we we admit that both either male or female could be abused, right? But what makes women more exposed to gender-based violence? Why? Um, uh, GPV stems from the gender struggles of patriarchy. We come mm. from a society where the man is the head. We were lied to this as early as kindergarten. Head of the family, daddy. Father. Even my orphaned friends had to put the same answer. You get it? Mm -hmm. Even our orphaned friends who never had fathers. Brothers, they still think, they still say that. You get it? So from that patriarchal society of man is the head, woman subordinate, 
uh, I don't want to sound not as much as a believer, but at times even religion, they tell you women be subordinate, be subordinate to your men and be, be submissive. Like, hello? Be submissive, yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, the religion thing, yeah. And the man just has to love you back. I wish they could all submit to each other. So it is patriarchy, it is religion partly. There's a discussion I fear to engage in on such life for us. I usually take it on on a lighter note with my Muslim friends. I'm like, if you can have four of you, can you choose four men? Mm -hmm. They don't like I guess mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so religion, patriarchy, mainly. Mm, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, you've put it out there. You said religion and patriarchy are actually what, um, what actually expose women more into uh, being victims, more victims of gender-based um, uh, violence. Now, from what I picked earlier, from what you said, let me quickly just bring this out quickly. You actually, you gave example of your mom and your grandmother, you know, being role models as you grew up, being very strong, you know, as you grew up. Now, are you, are you saying that from the coming generation, there is need, there is, a, there is there's need for us to have female role models and also for us to have female role models for the younger girls that are coming that are growing up is it would you would you agree with us that it is necessary for us to have you know for us to train these young girls right as they as early as possible you know train them and make them understand that they are not less of of a, of a being you know or so basically i want to say what is your what's, what is your position on role model right in and trying to call this issue we need to teach our dear sisters as early as possible that they are not any less of their male counterparts. We also need to teach these young boys as they grow that their sisters are not any less. Imagine if we're in a battle and we're having this exchange. One opts to give the other one a shield and this one tells the adversary to drop the gun. Wouldn't the battle be done? Mm -mm. Uh, the whole feminism movement and the activism we are having today, to me, is lacking. We're concentrating on giving a shield to the girl child. We're trying to empower them. We're trying to strengthen them. But we don't want to tell the man to drop the gun. Okay. It is time we faced these men and we told them, drop the guns. These are your sisters, these are your mothers, these are your daughters. You're doing it to her today, tomorrow they'll do it to your own daughter. So drop the gun. And it's a war one. And it is the biggest thing that drives me into this thing. I'm saying my sisters won't fight it alone. Until I tell my colleagues I have dropped my gun, guys, drop your guns against them. So one... It must be an all-encompassing fight. It is a struggle that must would get many more male feminists would have won the battle. And the mistake society makes, they tend to think that feminism is an idea of, men, of women over the men. Never. It is about equality. It's about humanity. It's about human rights. It's just saying the rights of women are human rights. We're not saying they are better. So we need to tell men to drop the guns. We need to tell that boys. They are not any less of who they are. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Conley. I mean, it's been, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, engaging you. Um, I think, I think just be ready for our call anytime. You really, really do. You're actually helping us so much and we really appreciate your time here. Now, <laughs> now quickly, um, you mentioned, you said something about patriarchy and religion being um, a contributing factor to gender-based violence in our society. All right. Um, I know in your position, because when you, you, were, you were careful uh, when you were saying it, you, not to sound too religious or not religious, 
you know? So you were trying to be very uh, neutral uh, in, 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 in pointing it. So I would want to say, I say you talk to your Muslim friends and I, would, I don't want to assume maybe you're a Christian or you're a non-believer, whatever it is, but you have, uh, you have a good tolerance to religion from what I see. Now, I yes. Now, patriarchy, there's a question that comes up there and I think we need to touch it. Is patriarchy, in, yeah, is patriarchy in itself, is it wrong? Is it, is it wrong, patriarchy? Because quickly, before you, before you move on quickly, remember our campaign, we're actually fighting against gender-based violence, gender inequality, and unhealthy patriarchy across Africa. Now, when we say unhealthy patriarchy, people can ask, is there a healthy patriarchy? Now, that's where this question might be coming from. Like, you know what I'm saying now? Like, is patriarchy in itself, is it wrong? Yes. To me, it is a yes. It's patriarchy. patriarchy is wrong, actually. Patriarchy believes in the superiority of the woman. It is entirely that, in the simplest terms. Hmm. Hmm. It is that in the okay. simplest terms. Man is better than woman, if I could use that. I don't entertain it, I have no room. It believes the man has to decide for the woman. It believes the woman is not human enough. They need guidance of a man. It is wrong to me. Outrightly, I'm sorry. Thank you. No, I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, I agree with you because I believe it's, it's very important for you to express your view firm and clearly. You know, um, we... I don't know. I think I saw the man's advocate here earlier. Okay, maybe she's actually out, out here. We also have you. You. You are a female. You. You are a, um, um, you're a, you're a male feminist, right? Now, I I, I give you an yeah. example. Of the kindergarten question we answered: Who is the head of the family? <laughs> the father, the man. My my orphaned friend who had no father. of their mother could leave home at five with their mother had to answer father which father they had never seen think about it that's patriarchy okay thank you julie noted um so in your opinion patriarchy is outrightly wrong we need to abolish all forms of patriarchy in our society that's what you stand for and Absolutely. yeah okay thank you now this issue of gender-based violence, this issue of patriarchy, this issue of gender inequality, how do you think we can end the cycle of trend in our society? Let's start from Uganda. Uh, what are you guys doing in Uganda? And then, of course, we'll then take it out to, uh, to Africa. What are you guys doing in Uganda to ensure that the cycle of trend, what I mean cycle of trend now, you see, you talked about, I mean, I, I have to go back to your examples because they resonate a lot and not just okay. that they resonate. I think um, it also will help you make these decisions. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, hello, I can you hear me? Yeah. We are taking a few steps as much as we can. We are carrying out outreaches. And me, like I told you, we are trying to involve the boy child. Me, when I go to primary schools, when I go to kindergarten, I need to talk to those boys. I need to talk to those boys. I need to talk to the girls. I need to talk to their male teachers. Because it is this male teacher seducing this, this pupil in P6. Oh. So it's, uh, we need to involve the men as much as we can. Then we need to empower the girl child as much as we can. Today, if you are saying girls need not go to school, if you happen to call your sister today when she's in that big position, she's a career woman, well employed, and she bails you out at some point, you'll appreciate why we are reaching out to these people in the village is very deep do the minimum you can but give the best for your children both male and female okay thank you thank you very much we'll engage more in this and also um maybe just outside this conversation and whatnot we'll also i'll um i'll try and reach out to you and let you know some of the plans we have in place 
that we're looking to actually roll out across the continent. And let's see how it can also um, work in Uganda as well. Just so how we we end this 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 nonsense. I usually call it nonsense. I mean, they, I mean, to me, gender-based violence and whatnot, it's, it's absolute nonsense. So yeah, it's like yeah. cancer virus. Corona has exactly. nothing. Corona has done nothing to the African continent. I wish mm. you could learn the figures of kids that are now mothers, pupils. And they have married them off. Their future is ended. COVID has done. Terrible. Yes, hmm. please. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I mean, it's so deep. So, yeah, um, I'll, I'll keep you in the loop and so that you'll understand what we're doing so that why we, when we roll out these this plans, uh, it also needs to be implemented in Uganda as well, uh, hearing from you and other countries and, and, uh, across Africa. We want to see how we can end the cycle of pain. And yeah, we're coming up with a lot of things. Um, quickly, just what do you think, what do you think we, we still need to know in Africa uh, about this problem? Because the way it sounds, it looks as if we're still in our primitive ages where this gender-based violence and patriarchy and the gender inequality is just a norm in the society. It's, it's just there. I mean, if you're counting 15 people, you got to have 13 men and then just two women, you know. I mean, it's just, it's just like, it's just like, I mean, if you even give two women, that's you being very fair. Like, oh, but at least we have two women in our board. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so what do you think we still need to know in Africa? And what do you think we still need to do to end this problem? And yeah, how can we work together? One the very minimum is to appreciate the idea of feminism. Okay. So then, you know, like I told you that it is never about women over men. It is about equality. It is about human rights. It's about equity. It's about an equal society. If they'll appreciate that, if they learn that when women, when women have equal opportunity, when women have equal space, it doesn't make them less of men. No, my brother, you'll retain your beard. Mm -hmm. Salary with a lady, if you're doing the same job, no, nothing. You keep your beard. We don't care. So we need to appreciate that that the rights of women are human rights. That is all. Then, the legal regime. We need to change the laws. But unfortunately, the legislators we are having are schools of patriarchy. Sorry, they are scholars of patriarchy. Two, they have been brought up in the same system. Then, they have the strings of religion that pull them back. I'll give you a scenario. The Ugandan parliament today fairly has a good number of female legislators. When it came to time to pass the Divorce Act, Divorce Bill, women were opposed to it. And you know what they were saying? It's against our religion. But we're only telling you that if you've stayed with this man for seven years and he's not put a ring on your finger, you're entitled to a on <laughs> No. The Bible says, is marriage and marriage. Um, guys, if you're still watching, if you're still there, I think we're struggling with, uh, with the network. Oh, yeah, he just left now. We are struggling with the network, and I hope he comes back soon. I mean, we're having such an interesting conversation, and, yo, I mean, I mean, he's really doing justice to this conversation, and I really thank you all for, I mean, bringing all your questions on, and yeah, we're having these things and so on. Um, yeah, Bill Feminist, here we are. Thank you very much, and thank you for being here with us, too.
Yeah. Um, thank you all. It's Patrick. Nice observation. Women have done tremendously uh, well in empowerment of the society. Yeah, I agree with you. And yeah, is there anybody? If you have any question, please just drop it out there. Oh man, conversation like this gave me hope that we can end the GBV pandemic. Indeed, we can end it. It is possible, and that is why we embarked on it. As a matter of fact, it is possible, but it is very, very difficult. And so we're actually hitting it, and we're pushing. We're ensuring that no matter how difficult it is, we will do it. Um, I am a Christian, and I'm a born and good Christian, and so I understand that with God nothing is impossible so for those things that anyone might think is impossible well not to me we can end this nonsense we can end this menace now how do we balance the incorporate religion when fighting gender-based violence against gender-based violence hmm. how do we balance and incorporate or oh, how do we balance and incorporate religion when fighting gender-based violence wow okay hmm. thank you um i'll just let i hope our guest comes back again let me see if i can just try and invite him but he's not on yet let me see if I can invite him. Um, let's see if he's on. I don't think he's online, but I'll just try. Now, but if I have to answer that, I mean, if I just have to try and answer that before our guests come, how we balance and incorporate religion. I think why will... Why will um, oh, Mr. Collip, welcome back. Mr. Conley, can you hear me? I didn't know. Yes, please. I hear you now. All right. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, yeah, we had lost you for a moment, and we were just having this conversation going. I, I really did um, believe you were going to come back. Now, there's a question that just came up right here. I mean, from what we're saying. Uh, from the example you gave earlier, I mean, we were losing you. I really love if you, had, if you were able to even go back there. When you're saying they were about to pass a bill on divorce, and then some women said no, we're against it because it's against our religion. You know? Yeah. And, and yeah, uh, would you please just go back a br briefly and just tell us about that again? As, as telling you, why I insist to me it is a mindset game. It is an ideological problem. It is not we just need women in positions. No those women we have in positions are, are still men in their heads. They are products of patriarchy. So in their heads, they are men. They are schooled as men. Even when someone is a female legislator, directly elected as a woman MP, they will still go and legislate as men that have been brought up in society of men as men. Yeah. Then they'll drop out, they'll oppose what ought to support the women because to them now, it's coming against their religion. The bill was rubbish. Women refused. They said, no, this can't be. We are Christians. We can't divorce. But maybe till death does us a part is forever. It is too long. And that is why men are killing their women in those houses. Because it's hard to step out. If you want to step out, your parents tell you, go back. But I'm saying I can't be there anymore. So are you saying if I must live, I have to first die? That is the problem. Hmm. It is an ideological problem. It is an ideological problem. It is a subject that must be taught very early. Kids very need to early. learn about it while they are still fresh and willing to learn. Starting it at campus is a whole different thing. You'll do it to pass exams. Mm -hmm. They need it in kindergarten. They need it yesterday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Um, so that's basically it as we go in there. Please, guys, if you have any question, uh, please drop it there. Now, there's this question that came up from what you just said. Now, I mean, I had to go back there so we can have a follow-up question. Now, how do we then balance and incorporate religion? Okay. How do we balance and incorporate religion as we fight against gender-based violence? Now, there is this, like you're saying, there's this, this conventional way we have to go about it, this secular way. But then this, there's this, we already established that religion and patriarchy are a contributing factor to gender-based violence and all right. this inequality. Now, how do we balance it? You have outrightly said that you are against any form of patriarchy. So we're taking that out already. We know that we are going to fight and, ab and abolish patriarchy. Now, how do we Absolutely. balance it? Because we can't abolish religion as it goes. So how do we balance religion and um, 
and the society in this fight against pick gender violence? I, at a very big risk, try to refer to the words of, I think it was Pope Benedict Ranzinga. He was trying to make a case for abortion. And in his words, he said, we cannot keep in church pretending that this is wrong, this is wrong as people are dying. I'm sorry if I'm quoting him wrongly, but he says we cannot keep pretending that we are religious and we are ministering to people when every day it's a funeral service. She's died after an unsafe abortion. She's died in labor because she was still too young. He openly said, we must stand up and support our people. Then he was also making a case for, I think, protection and condom use. The religious church is very much opposed to it. He said, people are dying of HIV. We can't keep pretending. We need to face reality. We need the people. So I think we can still strike a balance. We can still strike a balance. We can practice, we can get those practices, observe them, but as long as we still respect both male and female. The other day I was surprised on Easter, a few weeks back. It only got to me on the morning of Easter that there were the three Marys that were at the tomb of Jesus till the last minute. And you know who denied him? <laughs> the man. It was Peter. You know who betrayed him? It was Judas. Judas. They are always the men. But the <laughs> hmm. So what you're saying basically is women women are reliable. When... Well, yeah. Okay. No, it's for so what you're saying, if I if I get you right, if we have for us to incorporate religion and uh, balance rather and incorporate religion in this fight, what you're saying, um, I I do hope you can hear me. I see your network is, um, is, is slow again. Now, what you're saying is, we need to approach religious bodies and encourage them to teach topics like this, teach on issues like this, because what you're saying. Um, I don't know. I'm losing you again. We're losing him again, guys. Uh, oh, yeah, he left. I figured. Yeah, we're losing him again, and we just lost him, actually. So, guys, thank you very much for the conversation. You, you're you picking from all he's saying, and... Whoa. Yeah, um, yeah, he, he'll be joining us again now. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, you're welcome again. Uh, we had lost you for a moment. Can you hear us now? Can you hear me? My country for you. I have to struggle with VPN to access the socials. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Um, just, to, just, just, to quickly clarify, it's okay. just to quickly clarify what you said, your, your point you're making, yeah, the point you're making is that um, if we have to, for us to balance and incorporate religion in the fight against gender-based violence, are you there? Can you hear me? Oh no, he's really struggling with his network. Oh no, so shame. Um, okay, guys, thank you. Please um, just drop your questions, one or two. We are running out of time, so we'll be. I know we started a bit late, though. We did start a bit late, but we will be running, um, branding up anytime soon. So I'm just gonna ha get his final words on it, and yeah, and then we'll move on. And, and so, so please, everyone. If you're not following One African Forum yet, please do follow us on One African Forum so you can keep, uh, you can be up to date on our events and on our campaigns. All right, we have a lot that we're running at soon. You heard what uh, Mr. Conley had said and everything. We have a lot that we're running at across the continent. So guys, please, please, please do follow us on Instagram and then just follow us on all social media platform as at One African Forum. And yeah, you can reach out to us and see how you can be one of our champions. And we will. Keep you in the loop on the on how things are going. Yes.
we're keeping the look on how things are going. It is very important that you know what's happening. It's very important that you know what's going on. So, thank you, Mr. Collins. Sorry, I see you are struggling with the connection. Um, can you hear me now? Are you back? I really don't know, but I'm here. All right, thank you. Um, I just wanted to get to actually clarify your point earlier. You said for us to incorporate religion in this fight, we have to encourage churches to preach on this, to talk on this topic, to preach on this topic and have their positions clear and known, especially as it involves their, uh, their position against all forms of patriarchy, gender inequality, and gender-based violence. Am I correct? Yeah, you're correct. Then uh, religion does not operate in a vacuum. It must reflect the society we're in we must face the reality. Even when we want to be religious, even we want to be more religious than the Pope himself. But alas, people are dying. People are beating their wives. Every day it's a funeral. Every day it's a funeral service in church. So we can't keep quiet and we say, all is well, all is well. Women keep subordinates. No, we can't be submissive forever. Let's put the bar to the same level. Submit to each other. All love each other. All right, thank you. Yeah, can you hear me? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I was still struggling with your letter, but can you hear me? Okay. All right, I think I, I heard what you said. Yeah, um, I heard what you said. Thank you very much. So just, just to round it up, just to round it up quickly, we are running out of time. Our program should have been between eight and nine, and just maybe a little past nine, but I know we started late. Um, so... What are your final thoughts on this? What are your final thoughts on, on gender-based violence? I want you to send a message to Africa and um, if it's possible, try and maybe suggest a solution. Can you hear me, sir? Suggest a solution uh, for Africans because as, more, as far as we are concerned, these conversations are to equip us in this fight. They're to equip us in, in actually the struggle. So uh, yeah, what are your final thoughts on it? What are your final words on it? And what solution would you prefer? prefer to um, one African forum in fighting this? Okay, we, we're losing him again, guys. Yeah, he just left. So thank you, guys. We are rounding up on the show. If he comes back again, we're just going to get his final thoughts and his final words on it, and then we're good. Um, so I ask you, please do go follow us on all social media platforms and uh, just follow us, just get to know what we're doing and what we're up to. We are, like I said, we are moving. We're moving. Um, we're actually having this. We're having a lot that we're running at across the continent, and it will be very beautiful. It's going to be really, really nice if in your country you are one of those who are leading our campaign. So please, in your country, we would like you to be one of those who will be leading our campaign once it is launched. In, 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 a, in, a, in a few weeks' time, we'll be launching our campaign across the continent simultaneously, and that is what we want to do. We want to ensure that when we are shouting loud in Kenya, it is actually echoing in Uganda and echoing in South Africa. And when we are shouting in Ghana, it is echoing in Egypt. When we are shouting in Ethiopia, it is echoing in Mozambique. That's what we want to do. We want to make sure that our voices are heard loud and clear. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mugab. Uh, uh, Conley, could you please just give us your final words? I'd like you to give us your final words on this. Can you hear me? Oh. Okay, guys, what we'll do right now, I uh, just want to encourage you, like I said, go follow us on all social media platforms. I'll be rounding up the session now. Um, he seemed to be struggling. Yeah, I see. I just wanted him to give us his final thoughts. He's been such an amazing guest. I just wanted him to give us his final thoughts. So, Mr. Conley, I'm just going to add you on again. And please, when you come on, just give us your final thoughts on this issue. Help us provide a solution. Suggest to One Africa Forum a solution that we that um, yeah, that you think might work for us. And you know, and that will be done. I'm not, I'm adding you again. Thank you.
Yes, over to you, sir. I only hope. I'm... Yeah, can over you to you. Me? Over, to, over to you, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Please just give us your final thoughts and provide a solution for for this problem. Yes, Mr. Conley, we can hear you. Oh, guys, we're struggling to get him on. I wanted him to give us his final thoughts and his final words. Um, yes. Uh, however, the team will keep in touch with him. And, yeah, we'll just see how we all we need to work together against this. And I really want to commend you, Mr. Condon. Yes. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, I'm commending you for the work you all are doing in Uganda. My lawyer, Uganda. Um, I, I really appreciate you all. And, yeah, you guys are doing amazingly well. I mean, it's, it's all over the, the social space. And, yeah, please keep up the good work and keep up the fight. And uh, yeah, we are comrades in this struggle, and we all we are going to win, you know. Um, and then we'll have a saner society and um, a safer society for our uh, our children to grow up in. So thank you all very much, and thank you all. Thank you all very much, and thank you, Mr. Conley, for your time and everyone who has participated in this. And we really, I really do appreciate you all. And on behalf of One African Forum and the other gender th team. And uh, the White RDG team, we want to say thank you all very much for your show of love and support and coming on board. Thank you all. Like I said, go follow us on all social media platforms. You can even hit us in our inbox and then we can add you to just show you the link on how you can register and uh, be a champion and so you can you know, be a part of this struggle. Thank you all. Thank you for the session. God bless you all. Uh, Mr. Conley is still trying to come back. Let's see for the last time. Let's just see for the last time. Mr. Conley? I just need one or two words before I leave, please. The other yes. question is a problem, but I wish I could have just one, two words. Yeah. Quick one, please. Hello? Yes, quick one. Please give us your final thoughts. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you all for for hanging in there. I mean, despite the network issues, thank you. Yeah, thank you for putting that out. Um, uh, yeah, thank you for putting that out. I mean, I, I really want to thank you all. You you, stopped, you you actually stuck to the end with us. We appreciate you, Mr. Conley. We see you struggling. I uh, will work on it again. Hopefully, maybe in a couple of weeks time, we're bringing you back on, and so we can talk more on this. Um, have more um point on these and you know we just have it again so for now i want to say bye and thank you all very much it's um it's it's really it's it's really a pleasure to have you all thank you and as i take my bye